What is up everyone and welcome back to another death battle! Another one that I am super, super excited for. Now, we just had another teaser trailer feature a little bit of gameplay, some talking, things like that in regards to Final Fantasy VII the remake. Hurry up and give me that game, please. I will buy it. I want it. Give it to me. So off the back of that, it makes sense for our next death battle to obviously include the most beautiful in that game. Okay, Eris is beautiful too. But Tifa, or Tifa, however, right, this is another one that is really weird to me because if it was Tifa, would it not be T-E-E-F-A? Whereas Tifa is T-I-F-A, which is how it's actually spelled. So it's kind of like the Titus and Tidus it's all a little bit confusing to me. Regardless, I adore Final Fantasy VII. I'm actually tempted to do a Final Fantasy VII playthrough on my channel at some point, but that's another big commitment and obviously I'm playing Persona 5 at the moment. So with all that being said, today we are reacting to Yang versus Tifa. Now this is the first one that I'm going to be reacting to where I know absolutely nothing about Yang. Never heard of her. Um, I looked her up. I didn't want spoilers so I was kind of not looking too much up but I think she's from an anime. So as I say, I don't know too much about her. I love Tifa so I'm going to go ahead go with my girl, but when it comes to stats, I can't really say who I would think is going to win statistically until I watch the breakdown. So, with that being said, who do you want to win? Leave it in the comment section, and let's watch this. Punching! The most useful language in the world when words fail, and these two lovely ladies are fluent in it. Yang Zhao Long, the adventurous huntress from Ruby. And Tifa Lockhart, the Final Fantasy heavy hitter with enormous power. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Come on, Tifa. The world of Remnant is, well, crazy. Vicious creatures called Grim run wild, entire cities have gone to waste, and every single weapon is also a gun. Even nunchucks. Oh, that sounds like Disneyland to me. The happiest, most gun-filled place on Earth. Luckily, the world is protected by the Huntsmen and Huntresses, an elite group of expertly trained warriors. And where else would you get the training to kill bloodthirsty monsters than from high school? Oh, I can't believe my baby sister's going to beacon with me. This is the best day ever! Please stop. After losing her mother to mysterious circumstances and being trained all her life by her hero legend of an uncle, Yang Zhao Long was accepted into Beacon Academy. It's kind of like Hogwarts, except replace wands and books with swords, sniper rifles, and giant transforming scythes. Man, this place just keeps getting better and better. Seriously, I know where I'm gonna retire now. A natural fighter and thrill seeker at heart, Yang fit right in and soon found herself a member of the color coordinated team, Ruby. Led by her younger sister, Ruby. Because that's not confusing at all. <laughs> I'm talking about kicking off the semester with a bang. I always kick my semesters off with a yang. Eh? Guys? Am I right? What? Anyway, Yang's time at Beacon was well spent, and she became the master of punching all the things. See, while Yang's fellow teammates wield a scythe, a couple swords, some big guns, Yang's style of combat takes a more direct approach. Yes, yeah, she does, with her shotgun gauntlets. Her two golden bracelets aren't just stylish, they extend to form a weapon called the Ember Celica. With just a punch, the Ember Celica fires off a flash of kinetic energy, blasting a foe with an explosion of force and a beautiful sound. I'm so hungry! To top it off, these concussive blasts can fly several hundred feet. Yang is one of the few people I know who can punch a bird out of the sky. That's what you get for crepping on my car. <laughs> In addition, like most huntresses, Yang can manifest her soul as an aura. Aura can be used to block deadly attacks and heal minor wounds, and Yang's is no different. But my favorite way she uses her aura is when she goes Super Saiyan. 
Many hunters and huntresses possess a semblance, a special power unique to them that makes Beacon Academy look a little more like the Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. Yang's semblance absorbs damage from hits she takes, adding them to her own physical power. After taking just two attacks from a mech suit, she was strong enough to shatter the whole thing in one go. Unfortunately, her semblance does not increase her aura's defense, so she feels the full force of everything that hits her aura, and can only absorb power so long as she remains conscious. Luckily, she's pretty tough. Yang survived a punch that easily smashed her through a concrete pillar. You know, the ones designed to hold up entire bridges? And during a food fight, remember this is high school, Yang was knocked up into the air and did not come back down for about 100 seconds. More than enough time to reach terminal velocity. This means upon landing, she took an impact of nearly 50 tons of force. And stood right back up like it was nothing. Ah, oh, what a waste of good food. Despite this, Yang can only take so much. Her aura has a limit, as does her short temper. Pushing both of these too far leaves her extremely vulnerable. Like when this ice cream lady knocked her out because Yang had been fighting monsters all day with no sleep. It's also worth noting Yang is less adaptable when fighting against foes specializing in kicks. Still, she's confident she's one like of the Tifa. best in her class and dedicated to graduating Hunter's School so she can travel the world fighting everyone just for the thrill of it. Um. <laughs> Okay, I think Tifa could have Far this, Far to the west maybe. on the planet Gaia lies a small mountain village called Nibelheim. At first glance, this town appears calm and peaceful, not worth a second look. Until a sword-wielding goth guy found his alien mother hidden inside. He's celebrated with fireworks. After losing her parents and watching the madman Sephiroth burn her hometown to ashes, Tifa Lockhart joined Avalanche, a group dedicated to protecting the planet from ecological harm and meteors. Speaking of meteors, check out the size of the- Homestick! What? I was talking about the meteor. Sure you were. Anyway, Tifa was thrust into the stereotypical gender role of housekeeper by maintaining the hidden avalanche home base, Seventh Heaven. But it wasn't all bad because it also doubled as a bar. And she doubled as a bouncer. Now, I've been thrown out of my fair share of bars for totally illegitimate reasons, but not even I would urinate on the Seventh Heaven jukebox with Tifa on guard. Smart choice, since she is a master of close quarters combat. Tifa is a faint brawler, adept at surprising foes with quick, powerful strikes. And as she traveled with her friend Cloud to save the planet, she learned seven legendary techniques, the Limit Breaks. <laughs> Accessing her inner gambler, Tifa's limit breaks include rapid fire punches, explosive throwdowns, and summoning dolphins who uppercut people? <laughs> That's just awesome! And if she manages to throw all of them in order, she charges the last of her limit energy into one final titanic punch the final heaven! Fuck you, squirrel! Tifa is ready to throw down at a moment's notice, and even wears leather gloves everywhere she goes just in case a fight comes her way. And if she decides to get really serious, Miss Lockhart busts out her two round, beautiful ultimate weapons. Don't you dare. The Premium Heart. Oh, well, the Premium Heart increases Tifa's striking power immensely and continues to do so over time as she builds limit energy. However, they lose this increase after Tifa uses her limit breaks and need time to charge back up. Oh, that sounds like it could be a problem. Oh, if she didn't also have magic! In Final Fantasy VII, there's a wide variety of magical ability granting gems called Materia. Any person can wield any Materia, and it's up to the game's actual player to decide who gets what, giving Tifa no standard Materia setup. However, thanks to the Dissidia Fighting series, we know Tifa prefers to carry Fire and Ice Materia into battle. These fire and ice materia let Tifa conjure and wield fire and ice. Combine that with her freakish superhuman strength and she's like an unstoppable powerhouse. Well, her immense power does come at a price. Her skills and speed and defense are somewhat lacking, making her something of a glass cannon. But to help make up for this, Tifa wears two armor pieces. She wears a ribbon on her arm in memory of her late friend Aerith. Come on, man. Don't bring that up which protects her from negative effects like poison and paralysis. She also likely wears the Minerva Band to defend from fire and ice. 
Glass cannon or not, her strength is ridiculous. She's strong enough to fight an embodiment of Sephiroth and throw giant monsters around like nothing. And there was the time she helped throw Cloud through the air to reach the flying monster Bahamut Sin. After leaving Tifa's hand, you can see a mock cone form around Cloud, which means Tifa must have helped throw him with enough force to break the sound barrier. Oh, Cloud's a lightweight. Come on, how hard can that be? <laughs> well, factoring in the weight of Cloud and his giant weapon, <laughs> he must have been thrown with up to 153 tons of force. Well, shit, talk about power! You don't want to mess with Tifa's strong, twin, firm... No... ...fists. <laughs> also, she's got a really nice rag. Did I mention that yet? Feels like you're flying, right? Done. I don't know. I think Tifa might have this one. All Maybe. right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. What do you guys think? It's time Tifa for a dead yeah. battle! Come on, Tifa. Where is this happening? Hold up. Let me see some ideas. No need to panic people, just looking for someone. I will take a strawberry sunrise though. No ice. Thanks. Sorry, miss. I think you'd better turn yourself around and look elsewhere. So does this mean no sunrise? Girl power! <laughs> Nice! I love the music! Having fun? Hi, Shereo! Don't mock me! potential wife off the list. Tifa was naturally stronger and more experienced than Yang, but Yang's semblance quickly turned all Tifa's power against her. 
Even the Minerva Band, the best of Tifa's armor options to counter Yang's strength and shotgun blast, was eventually overtaken by the semblance. Plus, while Tifa could lift creatures many times heavier than Cloud using her limit breaks, she never shows this kind of strength anywhere else, implying that this power is exclusive to those limit breaks rather than something she possesses naturally. And even though Tifa's premium heart increased in power over time, they reset after her limit breaks while Yang's power kept on rising. However, Yang's real trump card was her aura. Her semblance would have been useless if she could not survive Tifa's attacks. Luckily, her aura is durable enough to take a punch that shattered a concrete pillar about 4 feet wide, a feat which requires at least 1400 tons of force. That's the equivalent of having 360 jetliners fall on your face. <laughs> Yang's power just pulled through in a snap. The winner is Yang Xiaolong. Okay. Okay. I don't know why. I guess I just assumed, based on what I know of Tifa, that she was gonna kick anyone's ass. But I gotta say, I don't know anything about Yang other than what I have now just seen. So it was a victory that I guess was well deserved. <laughs> Were you happy with the outcome? Are you happy that she won? Are you sad that Tifa lost? Let me know in the comment section and also let me know about any other death battles that you would like me to react to. I have such a long list and I'm always happy to add more to that list. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!